best looking cutscenes in the entire game. Oh fuck yeah, they've already been great looking, especially considering it's PS2. Yeah. Oh man, look. Kimari just points, and that's where Yuna is. Fair play to Kimari, what a fucking bro. Was willing to sacrifice his life for the team, I respect it. Now let's go. This is one that's going to get this episode copyright struck on YouTube, so... Yeah. Yeah, because it's... On. A, that's the thing, if you play in a video game and a song's got lyrics, it's like, well, I'm not uploading this. I always yeah. thought that this would be easier somehow. <laughs> that's the rule, innit? Because didn't you have a load of problems with that in a... Um, FF8. FF8, FF8 yeah. Yeah, because all of the music... one song? All the music in the cutscenes is uh, copyrighted, so there's like a one song that plays throughout, but that's one that's a band has covered, so that mm. band now thinks they own that song. And like Square Enix has done live performances of some of the more popular songs, so those songs always get copyrighted as well. And it's like, You're trying to even though it's not even like an instrumental arrangement, it's like a fucking digital synthesized arrangement of a song they've done. It's like they still get it. They still I catch think it. my favorite ones are ones where people are like, oh yeah, I did it like a bit of humming of a song to remind people on a podcast what the song was and get caught. and that managed to get copyright struck it's like fucking hell i think it happened to brad once on like um, a stream we did where he was singing along to a song like he sung a song and it got copyrighted and he's like well it's more a compliment than anything that i sound <laughs> is, enough yeah. like the song it's just you know like it, all those it things is I the said. youtube bot just like telling me that I sound awesome like let's go get Sid. at least close they enough about Zanarkand. Here we go. And this is where like Titus apologised. Like, I didn't know how much of a dick move it was. I guess to be like, hey, I can't wait till like you know we all win. And she's I like, yeah, gonna be dead sad. though. It's gonna be so much fun Forgive when me. Sin's dead, isn't it, Yuna? Isn't it, Yuna? Yeah. Can, can you can you wait for Sin to be dead? I wasn't <laughs> sad. Well, I was happy. That's the worst. It looks like Titus is getting mad height for killing his dad. Loves it. Mm -hmm. He, he wants his dad and Juna to both die. Yay. I think the reason why this like looks so good is because the entire game's like theme is water. Mm -hmm. You couldn't make the theme of the game water and not have the water look good. Forget all about sin. So even in this like in game cutscene, this water still looks pretty decent. I'm like just trying to think of like, is there a game that's done that before? Done what? You um, know, made like the main mechanic life. water, and then the water looks terrible. I'm Come sure on, there is. There's a what couple where like they've got a specific thing that they focus on, and it looks bad. Mm -hmm. I think the Bubsy 3D game where they wanted it to be the most like something about the vertices or something, wanting to look super clean, but they that was at the expense of having no features or geometry in the game world. Like, yeah, but like. The surfaces they put all their effort into Everyone rendering like um, uh, clean yeah. surfaces, but then didn't put any geometry in the level because the game Except couldn't handle it. But we saw what F Zero did. You? Yeah, so that's because like they F put Zero, music, didn't they? F Zero was pretty much all about Can FPS and music, and it was just like no shaders, no lighting, well, just basic you know? geometry with a JPEG in the background. That's all you need. And that game looks pretty him. damn good still. He deserves it. like Shadow the Hedgehog. Where it put it all into like edge and speed, and it like almost every 3D Sonic game is about speed, and mm -hmm. they almost always fail horribly at like conveying a decent sense of speed. Well, I think I my favorite thing about um, my you know Sonic Adventure one and two mm. is that they were so broken that hey, you can make those games Zarek. super fast because yeah. of the Let's speed running and stuff. Uh, but I think they tried uh, to smooth the edges so the much Spira, that. The one I'm from. Not all of the jank is gone, and all that's left is the boring gameplay. Yep. Uh, yeah. Well, here it is. We look. Can there. Everyone can go. So just then look at when it like cuts we'll to you unit of how much much. like money is on screen. And then we can mm. see. Like when she was that's floating right. there. Your Zanuck and Abe's would play. Yeah, yeah it looks we could all really fucking good for the time. Because of like all, lit up at night. all the the reflections and the transparency. That's the one. Yeah. 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 Right on. And the fact that there's the reflections game? that are, are like, they're not well, actually they're being fun. interacted with, but they look like they're being inter yeah. interacted with when the no character problem. moves. And they're not just reflections, the it's the model of the thing that's in the game underneath the water, but it yeah, looks like a reflection. and then, like, you know, look at that. effects put on like it. Like the reflection yes. of all the stars, and it's like, oh my mm. god. Before the sunrise. 
Nice thing just... is, this game has normally looked good the in the like pre-rendered cutscenes and not the regular cutscenes. That water does look just really fucking good for gameplay. And like that skybox and stuff. Mm -hmm. And this is like the important thing now where Tidus is saying, why don't you give up your pilgrimage? Just give up. I respect Lois for having the, uh, the appropriate emotes of like Falcon and Shadow. The sky, then to the whole city. It gets brighter and brighter. And he's telling her about like, yeah, Zanakin kicks ass. Because Yuna's like, what do we do after the game? He's like, whatever the fuck we want, it's a city. It's open till like five in the morning. Pretty. Oh god. So when I went to Beijing and we were out till like five in the morning, and the, how we got out of the thing at five in the morning, cafes were open like for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just a different world over there. That's kind of the the worst thing about being over here after a night out, isn't it? Well, you can, there's there's, there's like go. one shitty food truck open and a Mackey's, and you're like, oh no. So I like living in a city. Oh no, I meant like in cities. Oh okay. Just well, it depends what club you're getting out of, but the ones that are short like four or five a.m. There's nothing fucking open apart from a Mackey's. I, I never understood why Greg's doesn't open till four in the morning. It cleans. <laughs> And then there it is. Yuna's like, I can't. Can't give one a pilgrimage. Why don't they just open at four in the morning? I can't go. Like, Greg should open Saturday, Sunday, four o'clock in the morning. They would clean up. <laughs> just absolutely sweep up. That's the thing I was saying is like, yeah, the ripples in the water, they don't. Oh, Here we go. Man. Shine, the shine. We have the water. ripples don't actually affect anything, but they, they do the effects well enough yeah. that it. Looks like they're affecting things in the water, but, but it's like this bit is obviously they've both been swimming, like that wet hair and stuff. Mm -hmm. is like, oh my fucking god! I mean, there's admittedly like they look way too glossy and it looks a bit weird, but that still look, and the thing that games still can't get right. Yeah, there's games that still can't get these effects right. There are movies like, that can't kissing, get this stuff right. Like obviously, it's so hard to make kissing look right because you can't really get two 3D objects to like yeah. perfectly smoothly interact with one another. And there's a lot of like kind of, there's a lot of clever blocking there with both of their hair yeah. to cover up the fact you can't see it. It's kind of similar to movies when they don't want the actors to have to kiss constantly. They just like put the hair in the way or something like that. Hair in the way and the arms go over. But like that's a very solid shot of it there. And this is like the song as well that gets your copyright struck. <laughs> Well, that's why they're underwater and like all the fabric moving around on the water and like mm. the fireflies. But are you really surprised when they pulled off FF8 cutscene in space? I can't believe that. On a that, PS1. That still blows my mind. Like when I watched it again, I'm like, oh my god, they're handling like multiple reflections mm -hmm. in space in a PS1 game. And they've got it here like crying underwater. I guess all the ones here, look at how many particles are in here. It's sign of the times, isn't it? Like, I mean, the hair the and the particles and the reflections and stuff, but that's what we're dealing with now in terms of like trying to show off how games look in real time really nice. It's like the ray mm. trace and the particle effects. It really reflects like, how much PCs can do pre-rendered compared to, to what the PS2 games actually look like. I, just, I like that cutscene as well. Mm -hmm. well. I think it's like, of all the relationships in like the Final Fantasy games, I feel like that one's one of the more earned ones. Yes. Because you have like their entire thing throughout the games of like them finally coming to the realisation that they've both set on their path and they can't really avoid it. Whereas the Squall Renault one was just kind of out of nowhere. It's completely unearned. If I give up now, and it just, what do you mean that you're just in love with me? To. Like, okay, just that kind of came out of nowhere, but. Because this one has that like very teenage thing, which makes sense for both characters are teenagers, of like, do you know that nervous will they, won't they thing of like, hold, like still being nervous about holding hands and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, of course. Which in of itself, I think it's like quite a Japanese thing, isn't it? Of. I, I wouldn't particularly know. I mean, like, with the media that they show. Oh, right, okay, yeah. I, was gonna, I, like, I don't have much experience of being a teenager in Japan. I just mean, like, no, the in media, terms of the media, yeah, I get what you mean now. Tied us sleeping with a boss. Stay with me. Until the end. I'm Please. trying to, like, did she actually get married to Seymour? No. 
Technically, they, I think they are technically married because like he made them get married no at gunpoint. Only went through or not? Like oh, technically, that's adultery. The Kimari was there, like yeah. Kimari was like, he's observed. just been watching the entire time. He, he likes he's it. just Sebastian singing like, "Kiss the girl." Roger. Do you know my favorite about this is she's like, "You go back first, so people don't know what we did." And then Kimari's there, like, mm. <laughs> "Kimari approves." Kimari like. The thing is though, he must approve because otherwise he'd have come up and killed me. It'd rip me true. out. It'd rip me out. And Joe and protect you now. So that when Joe and Seymour got that like spear through his chest, that would have <laughs> just been tied us halfway through that cut scene. Like, oh, the picture of a possum. There we go. That'd be great if just it just cut, cut to like if it did just cut to Kamari actually singing that song. It'd be amazing. I mean, like this like relationship here is always one of the things about like FFX two. So look how adorable mm. that is. <laughs> like Tidus is like, yeah, I did that. I he's he's got like Strider pride, and Yuna's like nervously holding his hand. Oh man. Um, revisionist history coming in today, Carl. What's that? So the New York Times put an article that had a quote in it. Um, it's difficult to imagine Elden Ring succeeding in any other era of gaming. <laughs> and within half a day, they've changed it to like, it's difficult to imagine Elden Ring having this sort of cultural cachet in any other era. You mean like, oh, for fuck's sake. Dark Souls and the Souls series has been like okay. popular for two decades now. Lulu. What, Come since on. like, was it like 07 or something, Dark Souls? Or oh, Demon Souls must have been like 06 or Everyone, something. We like, leave at dawn. Joe and just some people are just like paid to have shit takes. Yeah, yeah, that's like, all it was. I'm sorry for putting you through. But like, the fact that they've edited it as like, no, that's no. not actually what we said. We said like they won't have as much cultural cachet. It's like I want to know what's well, been changed about. I've that. had I've had just Good night. Soulsborn fans screaming at me for the past fifteen years about this game. Yeah. So, Lucas, did you know when you make a really good video game, it's quite popular? <laughs> People like it when you make really, really good, well-crafted video games. Mm-hmm. But I, I, you know, think Clutch it's chest. always great when authors decide to edit a piece to make it look like they weren't as wrong as they were. Yeah, I think we Rather than, like, you know, admitting it or... At least stick to your fucking guns. That's the thing, you had a shit take on it. Yeah. So I think we talked about that once on like one of the podcasts we did like a while ago. Uh, there was that like um was it that lady? I forget what it was now, where like she wrote that article where it was like it had that kind of racist quote in it. Do you remember? Quite an early episode of the podcast. She's like that I vaguely that. remember. She was like, uh, ooh, top shape, auto med, let's have that bastard on. So that means he'll heal himself whenever he gets some, um, uh, if that's why status condition, as long as you've got the item in your inventory to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can't remember like, the name of the person now. I think it's like Alison Roman, the uh, the chef. And she had like I a. I would not have a clue, but yeah, that, that, that name does sound vaguely familiar, but it's been that many podcast episodes. Yeah, and it was the. Uh, basically, she wrote an article, or she was quoted in an article. Um, talking about a cookery book where she was making fun of Marie Kondo, I think it is. And the Marie Kondo um, might be a Japanese lady. And she was making, she was quoting this book that she'd read and she says, please to buy my cutting board. And it's one of those things where that's a really weird way to say that word until you imagine it with a mock Asian accent of like, please to buy my cutting board. Mm -hmm. And then that was quoted, people picked up on that. Like, oh, you're picking in on a, you're picking up on a, like an Asian lady and using a mocking rate like Asian um, uh, accent, and you couldn't confirm that's what she was doing. But that's how you read well, it. You, you can kind of read it as if that way, and like it comes across that way in the writing. And it especially came across in the writing because that quote was changed after the fact to be something she didn't actually say. Mm -hmm. And it was one of those situations where, like you said there, like oh, not even having the balls to stand by what they said where the person who wrote the article changed the quote and then put a thing at the bottom saying I changed the quote at the behest of the person I interviewed. Which is like, not how... You, you changed the quote. Like, well, the quote has been changed. 
So it's not a quote anymore. Yeah, that's not how quotes work. And that's something similar there, where it's something the person said was happy to be quoted on, but then they got called out for it, so they changed the quote. It's like, you can't do that, especially you not online. You can't change quotes. That's not what verbatim means. The Just the calm lands. Long ago. So this oh, is what... Grand Pulse. <laughs> Basically. The road yeah. ends here. God, I can't believe it took us this long to Beyond, get to a good game. There are no towns. No I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm yeah. just ripping on fucking Final Fantasy fucking 30. Yeah, because there's a lot more, this is like one, what one place to the next place, but there's so much more freedom in how you approach, especially with like the amount of party members you've got. Because in this game, party members actually feel individual, whereas in FF13, they, they basically They feel like they have a character that I like, and they feel like I, I actually understand what's going on in the plot. Oh yeah, there's also that exaggerated swagger quote, which was just like, hilarious. If you ever saw that one, I think that was about the Miles Morales PS4 game, no, or PS5 no. game. Right, this was, rings a bell. There was a reviewer who uh, reviewed it and said like, Oh, Miles Morales, he plays like Spider-Man, but he moves with the exaggerated swagger of a black teen. And it's that thing of like, it's just such an embarrassing descriptor of that. And I think they changed the quote because they got made fun of so much for it. It's like, well, you said it. All you need to say is that Miles Morales is like a cool, confident man. Yeah, you don't like the, the just the specific thing of the exaggerated swagger of a black yeah. teen. It's like why do you have to do that? Why do you have to bring it down like that? And for that, I think for context, the author of that piece was black, but they still got made fun of. Still, all you could have said is I would find a way. Reversed it and been like. Oh, it's different because Miles Morales isn't just a nerdy, to believe that words like a nerdy guy that's true. quite nervous until he puts on the outfit. Well, that's the thing is, oh, he is. He's just like nerdy in a different way. Well, yeah, he's okay, nervous nerdy. Yeah, like, he's nerdy towards like, like music and technology. Peter Parker stuff. is super, um, at least, like unconfident. At least when he's like you know high school, early mm. career years of Spider-Man, he obviously gains confidence over time, but he's normally shown as like being not very confident when he's peter but the moment he steps into the suit that's when all that swagger comes out and he starts talking shit so much because yeah. he's finally confident in himself as spider-man so you have to be like very very careful around here lucas because this is the point in the game where you start encountering malbos i thought you meant around this conversation <laughs> i'm joking no well, that's what we're quoting people but yeah, apparently we yeah, can yeah. just change quotes that we say yeah, whenever we, we want. So, so just like if anyone, if anyone complains about this video, we'll just check, we'll take it down and I'll change it and I'll say we didn't actually say this is what we actually said. Because that's you're allowed to do that, right? Apparently. No. Is there any game that's had more bad takes made about it than Elden Ring? I think recently it might be the game that's had the most just bad takes. I don't know. People said Pokemon Legends Arceus was a nine out of ten. I think there's been more consistently bad takes then about um, oh yeah yeah 100 percent like that one of like oh uh, what is breath of the wild 2 gonna take from elden ring it's like fucking nothing do you mean that game that influenced elden ring well like, so, oh, here we go this way we can start getting poison breath fangs. Of the, wild, the original we can start getting like, poison fangs from here now fuck yeah it's so great to me that so many reviewers and early critics and stuff are like Oh, this is, um, Elden Ring is just, you can tell that Dark Souls took it a level further and got inspiration from Breath of the Wild. Then people turn on their heads, so what is Breath of the Wild going to take from this game? It's like... <sighs> just wait till, like, Breath of the Wild 2 comes out and people start saying it, like, proper seriously as well, and you're like... It's the Elden Ring of Zelda. Yeah. Like, oh no, Wack has already been part of this. Wack has already had a kill. Uh... I think Lulu, yeah, Lulu's not had, like, a chance yet. So he's going to throw another grenade. Get the G-nades in. Uh. I think it is. I think, as well, because so many people have been just, obviously, like, the zeitgeist has been so rapid and effective around Elden Ring mm -hmm. that it encourages people to be there with those really spicy awful takes because they want like, to be part of the I want attention yeah I don't think they want to be part of the, uh, the conversation I think a lot of them just want attention I don't think they want a conversation that's fair because like, I think the, the cool part especially about having a conversation 
around a game like Elden Ring is talking about like oh the cool tactics and discoveries you made and stuff like that and experiences that you'll remember within the game not oh I think really vague thing like it wouldn't succeed in another era of gaming it's like oh, right well it wouldn't succeed because it wouldn't get made yeah it's that simple So notice as well, like you start, you get a very wide variety of enemies here because at this point in the game, the game expects you to have mastered the game's mechanics and the switching thing. Mm. So at this point in the game, they will start introducing like you see right here. There's a flyer. There's an armored enemy, and they've had them earlier. But this area contains like every single archetype of enemies for you to encounter. So like you are like uh, encouraged and basically forced to keep mixing up your team between battles because there's no like set amount of enemies in here. There's a big whole bunch. And I kind of like that. Fair. Yeah. I was, I was like, when they don't overdo it, but I never mind if they, they want to have one area where it's like, yeah, you can pretty much find anything to fight here, especially in terms of games where I don't know if you need specific materials and stuff for monsters in this one, but... You absolutely 100% do, yes. Right, yeah. So there, it's just go to this field and no matter what materials you'll need, you'll be able to find it off something. And uh, this is also like a neat mechanic that gets uh, handed out here, but I'll not spoil it till we get there. Whee! Look at that little catch wow. So yeah. as I said, you can yeah. bump into Malboros here, and Malboros are just as bad as they are in every other game, which means they can one-hit kill your party. They just party wipe you with status effects. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, they only appear, or they have a super low chance of appearing anywhere but one specific part of the field. Which is where I'll go. Because we've got to try and kill at least one. Yeah, we do. And, um... Like, talking about, um... Random battles in chat. Like, is it similar to other games where you get on a chocobo and you can't get a random encounter anymore? Uh, I believe so, yes. Yeah, so that's like a way to... Save yourself from constantly getting in random battles every two minutes. Yeah, and the reason people are talking about the Chocobo races because there's like a little mini game here that you need to complete the game and get like Tidus's ultimate weapon, I think. Oh, and sweet. You need to do that here because it's. Uh... Oh, I'll steal from it first actually because you get fire gems from this thing and fire gems are super good. So I'll steal that because it can't do anything. Look, it's silent so it just sits there. <laughs> I'm just going to try and steal from it again because I want to see what happens when it's silenced. I don't think Tombi's like. Tombri isn't necessarily scary because a lot of the time you know you're going to be able to kill it, but yeah, it's creepy as fuck, just it approaches. Yeah, it wants just to Just that mechanic of it'll reach you, you die. They are quite scary, but yeah, I think people are talking about the, uh, the Chocobo races because it is infamous for the fact that you have to get negative one as your time in the race. What? Yeah, because you have to collect balloons that lower your time, so you have to do it perfectly. So perfectly, oh. in fact, that your time goes below zero. Oh, and there is a way to do it quite easily, oh, once okay. you know the thing. And I'll, um, I keep mentioning this, I'm going to do just a stream where I do all the minigame stuff. Oh, right, yeah. Fun. Just the fun time party game stream of yeah. Final Fantasy X. Yeah. Like, when I'm able to go back to like certain point in the game, I'll just... Mm -hmm. Like once you've got the airship and you're in the game, I can just go back and do all this stuff in one go. Scale this thing. It's mine now. Overkill. Because my entire party as well has ways of like overkilling all these things. Really <laughs> good place to get XP. Is um overkill like give you more XP and more items? Yeah. It's if you do like more than 150% of its health or something like that. In one hit. Yeah. I was just like, is it one of those things that Yay! Because sometimes, like, the, I think, like, FF13, it's the quicker that you complete the battle, the more likely you are to get better drops and stuff. Yeah. Some chocobos! Yay! Fuck no, it. Oh this... my god, what? I thought that was an enemy. <laughs> no, this like, guy what comes is up. this propeller beast coming out? I think he helps you move around this area because it's quite large. Mm -hmm. Little fast travel station. Leave her alone, fuck's sake. As far as I'm aware, we haven't done a Blitzball tournament. No, like, to get Wacker's ultimate weapon and to get his limit breaks, you have to um, uh, go keep winning at Blitzball, which, again, I might do once I've got access to the airship on a stream mm. where I can just go back and just get all the best players and we'll min max it. Yeah. Because I'll just go get all the best players. Yeah. 
No, we don't. Let's do this. It's just that moment where we played our first place ball match. I thought it would be more hype than this. Yeah. It's like to get Lulu's ultimate weapon, you've got to dodge like 200 lightning bolts on the lightning plate, so we're not getting hers. So I think like, we, we just straight up, we're not getting hers. I just... Uh, yeah, to be fair, I wasn't sure like what that was for, but I knew that it was for a, a trophy. It's part of her ultimate weapon as well. Yeah, because like... All I knew is that, uh, you know, I had a friend that got a trophy that required doing that, and I wasn't sure what it was, but it must have just been like, oh, to get the platinum, you need all the ultimate weapons, which requires you to do that. Uh, oh, okay. So this guy's selling stuff. Ooh. Ooh. Uh, unfortunately, we can't buy any of these. There's a very specific reason why. We need to save as much kill as we can. Okay. I'm not going to spoil why we need the gill, but we need about 200,000 gill for um, uh, the next screen. Because mm. if we don't, people are going to complain. I've already had people saying, do you know about this? Like, it's the, one of the most famous fucking things in the game. That's <laughs> um, uh, there. Oh, no. Look at it. Nothing oh. jumps to mind, but like I'm, I might even know why, and I haven't even played the game. But it's one of those things that you always get asked of, like, do you know about this or are you going to get it? It's like everyone always gets this thing when they go through this mm. game because it's basically, it's right in front of you and it's pretty much required for some parts. Ah, right, okay. Titus is not doing well. Let's bring him out. Get it, Wacker. I think Kimar is at his, he's at his fun. Fora's moving in. Look at that. Just each member of our party is, like, purpose built and ready to kill like each one of these things. Just annihilating. So if you go to like the far left, that's where you find the Malbras, we're not gonna find the Malbras. So I wanna get to a save point before I do that. Before I even venture to anywhere in this place where we might even have the remote chance of encountering a Malbra. Hmm. Cause you can't even run away from them because they do bad breath turn one. You know, because fuck you. <laughs> Perfect, so let's open up this, uh, this path between us both. Because that will allow us to um, uh, share these two paths. And it means that Lulu can get Demi and head up here and go get like um, uh, all the good shit. Send her in. Oh, they're getting so powerful. Look at my little team. My little babies. They grow stronger, Lucas. They grow more powerful. It's my every week moment. Sink. I don't think my camera's out of sync. I hope it's not. How's it for you? It doesn't seem to be through my end on Discord. Yay, we leveled up. So we're going to go to Rin's Travel Ancient because I can see that save point. That save point's right there. I definitely need that save point. Yeah. Uh. Uh. Man, that thing got wrecked. Why not? Be rude not to just kill everything in one hit, won't it? I love that shit. I love when you get to the point where it's just effortless, like turn one, doof, doof, doof. When you just have the right loadout to get all of them in one hit, and it's like perfect. Not even yeah. a chance. Let's call your girlfriend Lulu. No, it's because it's a name. I call my girlfriend that because it is her name. <laughs> this one is mine. Get it, Wacker. It might be all, but we need it still. We need to get some sleep powder. There we go. Ow. Look at that, that wolf. The wolf just responded. Like the anger wolf just came in. Ah, fuck it. Fury. Let's go for Blizzara Fury. Just it's funny. Let's try and get this. Because like, supposedly you can like do both sticks at once, but it doesn't really work that way. Mm -hmm. That barely Ooh. felt worth it. The fact that basic attacks are just like, yeah, sure. Get it, Wacker. Yeah. We'll bring in Kimari. We'll just let Kimari kill it. Get it with Blizzara. That's the thing is, I've got so much MP, no one, it doesn't matter. I can just like cast all these spells without worrying because everyone just has like so much fucking MP. It's great. Mm. I love it when you just got all the like millions of MP. It's like, I don't mind, I'll just cast a spell every time. 
Actually, no, I should probably just do this. So fast. I like how straight away, just like, maybe not. Just in case. Because that's the if they get a preemptive strike and we lose our run. This time. Mm hmm. Kimari. Do it. Oh, I've caught this wolf. You know what? I'm going to threaten the flam. Do not move. Oh, you scared him, Whirl up! Look at it. Look as it refuses to move. Can you see it? I'm a none of it. He's like, he's scared. <laughs> he doesn't want, he, he don't want none. It's like, dear God now, please. In which case, I just mug it. I steal it. I'll take that fire gem, thank you. Okay, now it moved. You know what? Someone, like, across this field is going to have, about to have a really rough day, mate. <laughs> Somewhere at the end of this, um, uh, the calm lands, someone's, like, picnic's about to get ruined. That's, that flam's going to land on it.